This is a short video to introduce the concept of crashing a project or shortening a project. And, and what will happen sometimes is you'll have a project with a specific duration and you'll be, uh, you'll run into trouble and you'll have to come up with a shorter due date or, or uh, something else can happen and you want to find a reason, uh, find a way to shorten a project. So this is going to be quite a short video uh, as I go through the, the steps in the process and then I will upload separately a video working through a specific example uh, of, uh, of a project crashing and the two of them together should give you a solid foundation on this. I would say that this is probably the concept in project management that causes students the most grief. Uh, and uh, and is the concept that probably differentiates a student who gets uh, a very high grade with one who just gets through on, on project management. So this is something that's always worth practicing and that's why I've got this sort of bite-sized chunk uh, uh, for this introduction and then uh, I will subsequently uh, provide uh, a video with, uh, with a, an explicit example of, a, of crashing a project. So why do you have to crash a project? Well, there's trade-offs. It's not uncommon that you face a project behind schedule, a client who says, well, can we do it a bit earlier? And, and, and this is called crashing. So finding a way to shorten a project, which is not always possible, uh, within the parameters that you've got uh, is called crashing a project. So when you think about it, uh, here are some important considerations. Uh, you have to first say, can I crash an activity? Can I shorten an activity? And, and there'll be some activities that you can't make any shorter, and there'll be some that you can shorten. And, and so uh, finding out ways that you can shorten the project, you need to, to evaluate your ability to shorten specific activities within that project. Uh, and uh, that you can do it enough to, to do by the due date. So that, again, it's not always possible. The reason we do crashing exercises is to evaluate the degree to which we can do that. And, and you wanna minimize clearly the cost of crashing. And that becomes an important point when we think about which activities to crash in which order. And so that we, we have to think about the cost of crashing and, and generally, uh, when we're doing exercises like this, we assume uh, that crash costs are linear over time. So you say, well, we can shorten it by X number of days and it will cost us this much. And then the crash cost per period is that total cost of reducing. So the cost of uh, uh, the, the cost with the shorter timeline versus the normal cost, normal time over the crash time will give you a crash cost per period. And I'll highlight that you usually want to crash in one unit of time at a time, and that's a mistake students often make because in this case, another, another path can become critical. So that's why we, we do this stepwise. There's, there, there are also examples within project management where the first day will cost you X and the second day or, or period of time will call you X plus 10%. And so as long as you know what each incremental uh, period of time shorter is going to cost you, then you can, you can do the decision making relative to crashing. So, so in the example that I do subsequently, you will see that I give you the crash cost per unit of time, but it's, it's relatively easy to calculate. The next one is uh, you only crash projects, or sorry, you only crash activities that are on the critical path. So using current activity times, find the critical path and identify the critical activities. So the activities that are on the critical path are the ones that you want to shorten. If you shorten one that's not on the critical path, uh, you may spend more money you may make that individual activity shorter, but you do not affect the, the whole project because it's not on the critical path. An example I often use with students is, uh, imagine the two of us are driving to Toronto for a meeting, uh, and uh, the meeting is 
is in half an hour uh, and we're driving separately uh, and I can get there uh, in uh, 35 minutes uh, and you can get there in 45 minutes because I'm a faster driver. If we shorten the amount of time that it takes me to get to Toronto, it doesn't mean we can meet any earlier because you will still take 45 minutes. So uh, the critical path in that circumstance is the person that takes 45 minutes. So if we shorten the time it takes them to get to Toronto uh, by 15 minutes, that they're there in 30 minutes, then all of a sudden I become the critical path because I still take 35 minutes. So, the, so th that, that demonstrates two different concepts. The first is shortening my time originally will do nothing for the meeting time because the other person takes a longer time. And if you shorten the other person by that 15 minutes without thinking about my time, you won't be able to meet the 30 minute timeline either because another path becomes critical. Again, I'll show you in, in my example, but, but I think sometimes that example helps uh, students understand uh, the concept of why you shorten, you, why you pick activities on the critical path. If another activity that's not on the critical path is cheaper, it's not worth shortening. So the next step is, if there is only one critical path, select the activity on this critical path that can actually be crashed. That's the first criterion. And the second criterion is the one that has the smallest crash car, uh, cost per period. And so uh, usually you will do one period at a time just to evaluate if something else becomes critical. But uh, in this circumstance, can you crash it? If it's one critical path, then pick the cheapest one and crash that by one, uh, uh, one period of time, one unit of time. If there is more than one critical path, you will select one activity from each critical path such that each selected activity can, so you still have activities that can be crashed, and the total crash cost of all of the selected activities is the smallest. So uh, it says here, note some activities may be common to more than one critical path, and so sometimes the temptation is, and again I'll show you this in the example, sometimes the temptation is to shorten the, the one that is on that is common to two critical paths because it's easiest. But if it costs more than two separate activities that are on individual critical paths together, then that doesn't make sense. And I'll highlight that in an example later. But that is sort of the key trick to watch for. If you are doing a crashing question uh, as part of an operations management course, uh, the, the, the only tricks they can throw in is that something else becomes critical and uh, you have to choose between one or two when there are two, multiple critical paths, but I'll show you examples of that. Those are really the two things to really particularly pay attention to. The, the last step you do is you then evaluate what you've shortened, redraw the network, reevaluate the network, you update the activity times, have you shortened the project as much as you need to? If yes, stop. If not, take a look at what your critical paths are. They might have changed. As I said, that's one of the tricks that, that instructors can put in. Uh, and, and then you go back to step two. If it's one critical path, pick the cheapest one that you can still shorten. If it's multiple critical paths, evaluate the cheapest way to shorten both critical paths. The last point I will make here is that uh, Sometimes students struggle with the concept that you need to shorten two activities because they're on two different critical paths to shorten the whole project by one day. So you will shorten this activity by a day, this activity by a day, but it still only shortens the project by one day because there is uh, because there are more than uh, there is more than one critical path. So those are the tricks to watch out for. I'd encourage you, once you've taken a look at this, to look at the example that I post as well. I think that'll make it a lot clearer. Uh, and then, while I do think this is one of the tougher things, if you try it a couple of times, uh, intuitively it makes sense and it can be relatively straightforward. So, good luck with Project Crashing.